of the Ray family, Evangelist Brandon Locus. He's known for praying people through the Holy Ghost and praying here for mine. Amen. So I hope he's going to sing a little something. <laughs> Brother Brandon, you ready? Amen. Praise the Lord.
everyone. It's great to see you in the house of the Lord.
Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thy own hands. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And uh, how many of you speak Spanish here tonight? How many do speak Spanish? I preached uh, some similar thoughts in, in Spanish. At my, or we started a Spanish church at my home church. Amen. And, and uh, I just love it. I love the some of the music. Amen. They sing a song that says, Bendice me ahora. It means bless me right now. Bless me right now. That's what Jabez said. Bless me indeed. Amen. And the Bible says, God heard his prayer. Amen. In, in, uh, I don't want to put, put any songs down, but we, we uh, in the English church, we would sing a song where it says, we don't want blessings, we want you. How many remember that? We don't want blessings, we want you. I don't sing that part. <laughs> I skip that part. Hallelujah. I say, open up the sky. But then when it says, then when it says we don't want blessings, I, mm -hmm, I do want your blessings. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Because Jabez said, you've got to bless me indeed. Amen. Amen. But I like the Spanish song. They say, bendice me ahora. means bless me right now. Come on, somebody say, bless me right now. Amen. Amen. You ever met those people? I, I never pray for myself. I only pray for others. Bless God. <laughs> But before you can help somebody else, uh, amen, you got to be blessed yourself. Uh, God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing to many nations. Praise God. But Abraham, uh, his name was Abram. Who how many knows what Abram meant? It meant father. And, and in those days, it was a tremendous honor to have kids. And it was considered that time, uh, that culture, just a shame to not have any kids. And here his name is Father. And he had no kids. Zero kids. Walks around. Hey, father. <laughs> father. <laughs> People making fun of him. So he has an encounter with God. How many want an encounter with God? God says, you know, Abram, I, I'm going to let you off a little bit. I'm going to change your name. Oh, good. I've been getting mocked and stuff. What are you going to change it to? Father of many nations. Abraham. Oh, God. Really? Isn't that right? Father of many nations. Hey, I, guys, I, I got a new name. What's that? Favorite father. Father of many nations. <laughs> Amen. But how many's heard of Jews? Amen. How many's heard of Arabs? They can all think a guy named Abraham. He was 100 years old when he had Isaac. Sarah was 90 years old when that hot, young, good-looking lady, uh, no, she was 90. <laughs> she had Isaac at the age of 90. Judge nothing before the time. God has not done working in your life. Give glory to God. Somebody shout faith. faith. Will I find faith in the earth when I return? Without faith, it's impossible to please God, but I'm holier than everybody else. Well, how much faith do you have? Amen. 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 Well, I like to doubt you how to do without. <laughs> Romans uh, chapter 14 says, Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Amen. When uh, the Bible talks about uh, through faith, somebody shout, through faith. Through faith. I'm going to do it again. Get ready. When I point to you, you're going to shout. Through faith. You ready? Through faith. All right. They subdued kingdoms. Through faith. They wrought righteousness. Through faith. They stopped the mouths of lions. Through faith. They quenched the violence of fire. Through faith. They escaped the edge of the sword. Through faith. Women received their dead and raised to life again. Through faith. They turned to fight the army of the enemy. Through faith. You're going to get your victory. Through faith. Clap your hands and praise. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. And it's a choice to rejoice. Amen. It's a choice. And I was talking to someone going through, uh, said, oh, I've been depressed. I said, well, you've got to get a hold of that. The Bible says, take every thought in the captivity. They said, it's not, it's not just a thought. It's a, and I, I said, you've got to take 
You gotta take control of those negative thoughts. That's what produces those feelings. Those feelings come from thoughts. Well, it's not just thoughts. God's done with me. That's a thought. I think I just want to kill myself. That's a thought. You gotta, amen, take authority, bring every thought into captivity. And you need to say, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. You need to say, he which has begun a good work. Somebody shout amen. amen. You can't make me preach up here by myself. I'll come and say next to you. And you can help me preach. Amen. 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 Every, every time I don't get an amen, it takes on 20 minutes to the sermon. Amen. <laughs> amen. Because you you got to decide, amen, to think in faith. Amen. You got to decide to walk in faith. Amen. You got to say whether I feel good, feel bad, or feel nothing. I'm gonna praise God. You got to you got to decide to speak faith. Amen. amen. You can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you don't have to let it build a nest in your hair, do you? The decision what you dwell on. Amen. You make a choice what you focus on. Right. You, amen. You may not feel amen. You may not feel a certain way, but you can speak a certain way. Amen. God calls those things which be not as though they are. Amen. We need to speak, we need to decree a thing, and the Lord will bring it to pass. Amen. The woman with the issue of blood said, I shall be made whole. If I touch the hand of God. She gave herself a word. If nobody calls you out, you gotta give yourself a word. Amen. You gotta speak a word to yourself uh, and say, God does all things well. All things will work together for good and in the love of God. God's not done working in my life. He's the author, but he's also the finisher. Amen. He's the beginning, but he's also the end. He's the root, but he's also the offspring. Amen. He's the first. And he's the last. He's the Alpha. And he's the Omega. He's the Lion. But he's also the Lamb. He's our judge. But he's also our defense. And God's working for you. And God's not done. And you don't judge a book by its cover. You know, we don't judge it by chapter 3. you got to keep reading the back of the book. God's still covering your destiny. God's still writing your future. you got to keep on reading because God's still typing. Look at somebody say, God's still typing. He's not done working in your life. Somebody say hallelujah. Don't let feelings control and dictate whether you give God glory or not. You need to say he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. I will rejoice. I will speak faith. I will speak faith. Under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, Paul in Romans looked back and said, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. Right. Well, I, the version of the scriptures I read said uh, it, it showed a little bit of staggering going on. Uh, did y'all remember that part about Ishmael and Hagar and everything? How many remember that? But you see, God, when he looks back, Amen. Uh, Psalm 32 says, Blessed is the man whose uh, transgression is uh, forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man who the Lord imputeth not sin. Amen. That means when God looks back at Abraham's life, he says he staggered not. But God, he lied to, what was the guy's name, Abimelech, or whatever the king he lied to. He, he, he uh, so, I'm just going to break it down for you all. He slept with Hagar. Amen. Trying to rush and produce the promise outside the time of God. And God had Paul right. He staggered not. Amen. Lord, don't you? And some of y'all are carrying your mistakes around in your head. Oh, God, I messed up 15 times. Oh, God. I... Now, wait. The Bible says, he who knew no sin was made sin for us. He took your sin on him on that cross. What are you doing here? If he took your sin, what are you carrying around? Y'all can't both carry it. But it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he who knew no sin was made sin for us. He died as though we were a guilty man. That we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Somebody shout, I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the 
These stained glass windows are about to break if you say it one more time. Say, I'm the righteousness of God. You see, it's not, amen, our own righteousness, which was as filthy rags. Oh, praise God. But it's His righteousness. It's His righteousness. And then, when you get baptized in Jesus' name, God hits the delete button on those sins. That word uh, for remission of sins is the Greek word aphesis, meaning forgiveness. It's literally, you are forgiven amen, of every sin when you're baptized by immersion in his holy name. Praise the name of the Lord. What's the name that makes demons tremble? The name that makes hell back down. The name that washes your sins away. The man who took male prince in his hand for you. The wind and wave talker and the sea water. The friend that sticks closer than my brother. The one who was and is and is to come beyond. The first and the last. That Jesus. Amen. He made a way for you. Praise God when there was no way. You were not a people, but he's grafted you in. Hallelujah. And now you are a people. Amen. He has made you the righteousness of God in him. So that when God sees you, uh, Adam, though you just said, now you've got a coat on you of that innocent lamb. Praise the Lord. The best thing I ever did do, I took off the old robe and put on the new. The old robe was battered, tattered, and torn. The new one was spotless and had never been worn. The best thing I ever did do is uh, take off the old robe and put on the new. Uh, the, uh, Paul said the Jews are going about to establish their own righteousness. And they have denied the righteousness of God. We need to just say, Lord, I thank you for your righteousness. Lord, I thank you for your blood. I thank you for your grace. When gloom and sadness whisper, you said there's no use to pray. I look away to Jesus, and he tells me to say, I see a crimson stream of blood. Come on, somebody. It flows from Calvary. It's waves which reach the throne of God. They're sweeping over me. I'm so thankful oh, tonight that I'm on my way to heaven. That he would give you an abundant entrance. Whew, that, means the, that means the gates are going to fly open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard about two ladies that went to heaven. And Peter had a little talk with them. He said, Now, if you just do one thing, you're going to have a good time here. But if you, if, I mean, if you, if you keep from just uh, doing one thing, they said, What's that? He said, Don't step on any ducks. And so after a week, one lady accidentally stepped on a duck, and Peter said, as your punishment, you're going to be chained to this guy right here. He was ugly. Not a good, not anything good looking about this guy at all, just awful. The other lady was extra careful. And, and she made it a whole month. And this is a joke, by the way. And <laughs> she made it a whole month, and Peter said, okay, you're going to be linked up with this guy here. He looked like a movie star. She said, wow. I don't know what I did to be linked to you. He goes, I don't know what you did, but I stepped on a duck. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, y'all need to get back in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's put our hands and thank the Lord. <laughs> Roger, you're good. Hallelujah. He which has begun a good work in you shall perform it. God's doing a good work. When God called you, He knew you'd make mistakes. When God called you, He knew you'd drop the ball. He knew you'd fail. We, we all know God can only use perfect people throughout the whole Bible, right? The Bible's full of messes like you would not believe. Uh, the soap operas can't come up with crazy stuff that's in this Bible. Which helps further reinforce that it's an accurate book because no culture sits and writes the sins and, and failures of its kings and its. Yeah, right. Praise God, the Bible's accurate, amen? amen. Come on, somebody. Lord, do I have to tell you? Do I have to talk about this? Okay, here it is. It's in the Bible. I'm embarrassed to talk about it, but it's in the Bible. Uh, Judah had a son. He passed away. 
and if he, uh, his son was married to a lady named Tamar. And, 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 uh, and Judah had said, okay, I'll give you uh, my younger son, you know, and he never did. And the lady, there was something in Tamar that said, I want a son. I want a son. And so she dressed up as a prostitute and waited where Judah was going to be passing by. Praise God. No one's running the aisles. <laughs> Nobody's swinging from the chandeliers. But long story short, uh, Judah, uh, she seduced Judah, her father-in-law. And uh, in her, her barrenness and her time of having no husband, her husband had passed away. And she, through this crazy scenario, uh, conceived not one but two children, twins. Fairies and Zara. And, and uh, she, Judah, uh, when he found out about this, was angry. What kind of a person are you? I'm so angry. I'm so mad. And by the way, who's the father of these kids? <laughs> well, it's who owns the staff here? <laughs> oh. Okay, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll cover it for you. Now that's a mess, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm preaching about God's not done. That's right. God can take a mess and turn it into a miracle. Amen. And she has barriers and zero. And then you go fast forward to the book of Luke. And he's listing the, that genealogy of Jesus Christ. That chronology and so-and-so begat so-and-so. And there you see a little name. Ferris. Ferris, one of those twins that was conceived in that crazy scenario was in the very lineage of Jesus Christ. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. No one's excited about it. Nobody's running the aisle. But it's good news tonight. Because if you're in a mess, if you're in a predicament, if you're in a pickle, if you're in something that doesn't seem uh, like God to work with the devil, there's a sudden pain, amen, through ordinary people. Praise God. He was, he, he grew up in Nazareth. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? God is able to bring uh, something miraculous out of your situation. He's not done working yet. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Judge nothing before it's time. Amen. Judge nothing before it's time. We prayed for my grandfather for so many years. So many years. At 90 years old, he got baptized in Jesus. name. Hallelujah. 90 years old. This, this photo may not mean a whole lot to you. Praise God.
Nobody can stop you from speaking faith. Nobody can stop you from confessing the word of God. Nobody can stop you from saying, in the stripes I'm healed. Nobody can stop you from saying, amen, Brother Bert, that God's going to open doors miraculously for your ministry. Nobody can stop you, Brother Zach, from saying, God's drawing souls to me. Praise God. That are going to get healed on the base. That are going to get, amen, filled with the whole Ghost and going to church. Nobody can stop you from saying, your loved ones are going to get saved. Nobody can stop you from saying, God's going to perfect that which concerns me. I don't know what you're believing for, amen, or what it is you need. But, but just claim your healing, claim your blessing, claim your uh, financial promotion, uh, claim a mental healing, claim a ministry. Everybody, every one of y'all ought to be doing miracles. Amen. These signs shall follow them that, that what? Believe. Somebody shall believe. believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Paul, will you come and pray? Will you come and pray? Alright, I just go lay this handkerchief on. And they would get that's what the Bible says. Jesus said you can lay your hands on the sick. There's an anointing. I, I was in a, a church in Marysville, Ohio, not this not yesterday. I was there yesterday. Uh, about a month earlier. And this is no glory of my own, but I just uh, you know, I just came over, I was praying for some tips you want. I touched her. She after church she went. <laughs> Being touched by shoulders and have been in such pain and they're healed. Hallelujah. Well, that wasn't me. Oh, praise God. But that was the anointing of the Lord. All you gotta do is touch somebody. You gotta say amen. They shall lay their hands on the sick. Well, I have to pray this professional prayer. No, you don't. Your professional prayer didn't get anything done. Just lay, just lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall cast out devils, not counsel them. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. We've got to get in the flow of the Spirit. You say, I just don't believe that. Well, it won't work for you. I don't believe that that's all possible. Well, it's not for you. Ten spies went in and said, we can't do it. They were right. We can't have the land. But there were two, Joshua and Caleb. Oh, thank God. Thank God for Joshua. <laughs> and Caleb, they were of another spirit. They said, that if God has it for us, it's for us. I don't care what it looks like. And they spoke it. They said, we're going to enter in. The Canaanites will eat like bread for us. God will destroy the Canaanites. Amalekites and parasites and stalactites <laughs> and termites. And they, they said, we, we can do all things with God and we're going to do it. They were right. The two were right. The ten said, we can't enter in. They're, uh, they're giants. We can't. Do it. They were right. Whatever you speak, whatever you believe, that's your own gospel. Oh, God, I want to start speaking some faith. Yes. Psalm 78, 41 says they limited the Holy One of Israel. I don't want to be guilty of limiting God. They limited God. Well, you can't limit God. Yeah, they limited the Holy One of Israel. Mark, uh, the book of Mark says Jesus in Nazareth could not do any mighty works there. It says could not. Because of their unbelief. Oh, uh, yeah, we already know all about Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know who his parents are, Mary and Joseph. We know his brothers and sisters. We know everything about him. And it says he could not do any mighty works. They had a, they were accustomed to him. They had familiarity, which prevented him from being able to work. That's what it says. I feel like I need to look that up because somebody's saying, no, he can he could have if he wanted to. He could have. I prove all things with the scripture. If I say something outside the scripture, you have a right to question it. And if you have the right spirit. Okay. Uh, Mark 
Mark 6, 5. Mark 6, 5. What version do you want? So was that that King James about me? <laughs> okay, King James. And he could there do, he could there do, no, not even. Say that he laid his hands upon a few sick folks of him. So he still did a little bit. He could there do, no, not either. New Living Translation, and because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people. The NIV, the nearly inspired version. No. Says he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people. I don't want to be a Nazareth as far as it's concerned about what Jesus can do. Amen? I want to be in that flow. Luke 4 and 40 says, When the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse manners of diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them all. When the sun was setting. You'd think when the sun was setting, Jesus would be winding down, doing less and less. But he wasn't. He started ramping it up. When the sun was setting. When the sun was setting. How many know where I'm going with that? We're living in an age. We're living at the end of a dispensation of time. God's not going to step back and do less and less. He's going to step it up and do more and more. The later it gets, the greater it gets. When the sun was there, he started doing every kind of miracle you could imagine. Thank God. Daniel eleven thirty two. The people which do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Amen. Right in the midst of all the other garbage going on. The people which know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Amen. Someone shout hallelujah. There's famines, pestilence, diseases, and all that, the perversion. Uh, Jesus said in Luke 17, it'd be like Sodom and Gomorrah. But yet, in the last days, saith God, yeah. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. How many's glad that he'll pour his spirit out on all flesh? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to the Lord and see the Lord. So pour out my spirit. I just want to be tuned in, plugged in, a part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. But I want to encourage somebody tonight that God is not done working in your life. They were in Egyptian bondage 400 years, but God heard their cry and brought them into a land that flows with milk and honey. Gave them houses they didn't build, wells they didn't dig, and vineyards they didn't plant. There was not a weak or sickly among them. The, the Egyptians gave them treasures and gold and stuff to take with them. How is that possible? Because with God, all things are possible. Yeah. Uh, pastor told me recently about a church in Ohio that uh, they wanted to expand and build and then finally get a building. And they put an ad in the paper uh, that said, would anyone like to donate land to us so we could build? And it was in a, a nice neighborhood. And there was a lady that had always been against that church. She had always opposed them and was not in favor of them. And she just out of nowhere, she called them up and said, I'd like to give 10 acres to your church. They said, well, okay. And they met with her and everything and the, and the attorneys and whatnot. And they signed the paperwork and all that. And uh, a couple weeks later, she called up. She was... Uh, I, I, I changed my mind. I want that man back. It was too late. <laughs> She'd always been against the church, and uh, for a mysterious window of time, she said, I'm giving you, you the land to build you. But then she said, What did I just do? She said, And they kept the land, and they built on it. <laughs> God's able to work. Amen. God's able to do anything. <laughs> Praise God. I got a call from a pastor in Florida, a pastor friend of mine. His grandson, 17 years old, was going blind. Black spots were appearing on his eyes. And he had lost all vision in his right eye. And the same thing was happening in the left. It was down to half his vision. They said, this is irreversible. We could give him the, these very, very, very strong steroids that might 
stuff, the loss in the left eye. We cannot bring any vision back. This, this terrible condition. Amen. They begin to pray and call on God. I called up and prayed for Philip in the hospital over the telephone. Thank God. Others prayed. Praise God. He woke up the next morning. Amen. He woke up the next morning after this going on for, for weeks. Amen. He woke up. Praise God. And all the vision was back in his left eye and all but 20% in his right eye. Over the next few hours, his right eye cleared up and all vision 100% came back to his eye. Go on, Peter. Go on, a beautiful work in God. God's able to work. Amen. He, he hears your prayers. Thank God. He hears your cries. Amen. And he knows what you're going through. And he loves you. Amen. Amen. Fear not, little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Jesus said, ask that your joy may be full. Amen. Believe God for something. Every one of you has a destiny with your name written on it. And a plan for God to work in your life. And I want you to claim it. I want you to believe it. And keep growing. And keep thinking in faith. Amen. You don't have to always feel faith. But you can speak faith. Amen. And you can confess the word of God. The devil cannot stop you from confessing the word of God. And this person I was telling you. I was talking to. And I, and I was reminded of the scripture. Satan came to Jesus and told him. And tried to get him to kill himself. Said, cast yourself off this pinnacle of the temple. Remember? And Jesus kept quoting the scriptures, quoting the scriptures. He was tempted in all points of life as us, yet without sin. Amen. Yet without sin. He's the only one who can say that. I believe. So you pulled the word of God, and then, and then it says, and the devil departed from him for a season. They put that in there for a season. So that means, you notice that it came, that means that at some point he came back. Amen. But you gotta keep quoting the word of God. You gotta keep confessing faith and confessing the scriptures. Amen. Say so we're gonna do some power for God. We're gonna do something. Amen. So you're gonna have the working of miracles. You're gonna have gifts of faith. Are you speaking that? Are you believing that? Keep speaking it. Keep speaking. I'm gonna grow up and be somebody powerful. This brother here in the, in the blue shirt. Are you expecting that? God's with this young man. God's going to bless him. God's going to do something good as a He's making some things that are going to die. I rebuke him in the name of Jesus. You speak to him. You speak to him. It's not click your heels together and end up in Kansas. It's the mighty word of God. It's the almighty word of God. And you expect it. God's flow of blessings. Finances, wisdom, harvest, souls, expected equal motion. Confess it. Amen. Direction in your relationships, your personal life, everything, everything you need. You believe God. Thank God you believe it. Amen. Amen. And He won't leave anybody out. God's not done. Sometimes faith, see that, it doesn't take faith when, oh, everything's going great today. That don't take faith. It takes faith when it looks contrary to what you are believing for. Amen? It's not faith when everything, everything is peaches and cream. Amen? But it's faith. Those crops would love to see sunshine all the time, but it takes storms, too, to make them grow. Somebody said, amen. 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 They they did an experiment. Scientists did an experiment where they they put plants in just a perfect environment. Just I mean just everything was perfect. And and they and they uh, had the temperature, everything was exactly perfect. The, the plant food and everything was perfect, the right amount of moisture and everything. And then they were still weaker than ones in the wild. 
ones that that fierce winds and droughts and storms and, and, and it makes those roots go deeper. Amen. And it makes the structure of the trees uh, stronger. Amen. Because they go through some stuff. It makes them more durable, more resilient, and stronger. Amen. How many's been through some stuff? Oh, praise God. It's, and I look at some older times tonight. I'm looking at some folks that have been through some things. But God has not forsaken you. God has not forgotten you. Oh, praise God. In the midst of your storm, in spite of all the hell, all is well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And you've been through some things, but you're still here. And, 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 and because it's Wednesday, you're not a SMO. A Sunday morning only. <laughs> and, then, and then we have priesters. They come on Christmas and Easter. One preacher said they're a priester. But we're faithful to the house of God, to the things of God. You guys are faithful. Amen. Amen. Be not weary and well doing, for you shall reap in due season if you faint not. Amen. I'm going to say thank God. If you keep, keep pronouncing faith. I love your joy, sister. I love your joy. It's brought you through. But it's infectious. You get around people and spread. you got to keep it. Keep it. Stir up the gift that's in you. I want to stir some chuckle up in the church. No, stir up the gift that's in you. Stir up stir up again. Thank God. Keep His Spirit flowing in your life. I want to stir it up. Amen. David danced with all of his might. If the Spirit really hit I me, mean, if it just really, really, really hits me, if He makes me, uh, I guess then I'll dance a little bit. We need to get back to dancing. Smith Wigglesworth would wake up, they told me, and dance for 10 solid minutes every single morning, first thing he did. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't think it takes all that. Well, he had 13 dead people raised to life again in the ministry and never lost a cancer patient. <laughs> hallelujah. Sharp two edged sword in our. Uh, oh, I don't read it. Psalms. Y'all making me look in the Word tonight. Uh, Psalm 148, I think it is. Amen. Somebody say praise God. Praise God. You're going to love this. This is up my learning. Psalm 149. Praise you the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song in his praise and congregation of saints. Okay, we've done that. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Amen. Let them praise his name in the Man. Who's got it? Morning. Starts with a D and ends with an ants. Man. <laughs> Some of you guys are good. Swift. Verse 3, Psalm 149, 3. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. Here's some dancing lessons. You ready? Amen. All right, let's stand up. Let's all try it. All right. You ready? Y'all ready? One. Two. Repeat. <laughs> it's so just to, oh, listen to this. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let the high praises of God be in the mouth and a two edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Now, Amen. That's not talking about natural people, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's spiritual warfare. When you start praising God, you start shouting praises, you start dancing, you start talking about shouting. Something begins to happen. Oh, praise God. Something begins to happen. 
the devil's been on your back giving a rough ride. God inhabits what? The praises of his people. He doesn't inhabit the doubt, pout, and do without. He doesn't inhabit the sympathy and pity party. He inhabits the praises. He inhabits the praises. He's a great guy. Somebody say, yes, he is. He's a deliverer. He's a healer. He's the author and finisher of your faith. He's your shepherd. He's going to provide for you. He's listening to your prayers. He's going to do something. Give God a hand up. You've 
got that power. You guys can pray for glory to God. You can pray folks through anywhere you go. Amen. I prayed a lady through in the in the laundry room of my hotel in Houston. I was just trying to do laundry. And she kept staring at me. <laughs> so I talked to her. I was in Houston. And she said, uh, yeah, she goes, I go to Joe Osteen's church. She goes, I met him once. And this is nothing against him, but she this is what she goes. She goes, he had so much makeup on his face. You know, all the cameras. She goes, he looked fake. I go, well, no God bless him. You know. But I said, have you heard about the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues? And I'm not trying to insult him. I'm just telling you the conversation. I said, have you heard about the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues? She goes, I'm reading a book about that. She goes, I'm reading a book about that right now. And I go, well, if I told you God would give it to you right now, would you want it right now? She goes, I I'm, I'm not ready. I go, we don't have to get good to get God off. We get God, and he makes us good. And I said, I said, God wants to give it to you. And I said, let's just pray. And we started praying. And then also I looked over. Her, her lips were beginning to triple a little bit. Hallelujah. And, and, and her tongue was beginning to move. Hallelujah. I laid hands on her. She began to speak with tongues in the laundry room. She came to the church where I was preaching and got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. She showed back up. We were, we were in a revival every night. She showed back up every single service. Amen. And then after church on the last night, she told the pastor, she goes, I, I got something I want to tell you. We were at IHOP. We were out to eat. All of us went out to eat at IHOP. And she said to the pastor, she goes, I want to start paying tithes at your church. And he had me back to preach. <laughs> Someone say glory to God. Glory to God. It can work anywhere. Praise God. Anywhere. Glory to God. Anywhere. I was checking out of my hotel in Inverness, Florida, two weeks ago. And the lady had a big brace thing on her hand. And I thought, what kind of hypocrite would I be if I didn't pray for it? And I, I, I went to, I said, oh, what happened to your hand? And she goes, oh, it's this arthritis in my wrist and head, so bad, so much pain. And I said, well, I said, uh, can I pray for you? She goes, okay. I said, Jesus, touch that. And I felt the Holy Ghost. Jesus, touch this hand. And I go, and I pray, and I, and I go, okay. Now, try to move it. She goes, oh, I can do that. I go, well, that wasn't, I didn't say that wasn't the point. But I, but I said, well, go ahead and just try to move it. She goes, okay. And she started taking that brace thing off. And she goes, wow. I normally would be really hurting right now. Oh, it's not, it's not hurting. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You can have a God flowing through you, flowing with you. Amen. Everywhere you go. In Lexington Sunday, I, I had a prayer line. Folks getting healed. And this one dear lady right here, she didn't even get in the line, but the Holy Ghost took over me. I said, you just got in a line of fire. God's going to heal you with that diabetes. She goes, oh. I go, does that mean you have diabetes? She goes, yeah. I pray for her. Please. Hopefully she's healed. Praise God. And you keep on speaking faith. You see a cloud the size of a man's hand? Speak faith. Amen. When I'm praying somebody through to the Holy Ghost, if they, if they, if, if a big time just begin. The, 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 the. Yes! That's it! Let that go! Come on, hallelujah! You speak that! Let that go! Let speak it out! Speak it out! Well, I'm not going to believe them as they speak in tongues for 45 minutes and fall on the ground. No, you see a little bit of God moving and you pour, uh, you pour gas on the fire. You. I mean that in the sweetest possible way. But 
I want to make sure it's really, I want to make sure it's really good. And they just quenched it and killed it. And that person walks back on, and the person goes right back to talking in tongues. That skeptical, suspicious, negative spirit will quench the flow of the spirit. Amen. 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 Billy Cole taught, if you expect it to happen, it'll happen. He said, if you think it won't happen, if you think they're not going to get the Holy Ghost, you can say, he said, you can say all the right words. They won't get it. He said, if your faith's like a, he goes, I can't describe it, but it's like a radio signal. What you're really thinking, what you're really feeling is what you'll transmit to those people. If you believe they'll get the Holy Ghost, if you know it, they'll get it. If you're thinking they're not going to get it today, they won't get it. You, are, you have a power. You can transmit. I want to be a conduit of of faith. Uh, I was preaching in Reading, in, in Reading, uh, Pennsylvania. That's not far from here. You know the Bames, did you? Did you know the Bames? Did you guys know the Bames? The Bames. And I was teaching on faith, and, and we had a space between the services. And I, I said, we've got a little time. I'll pray for some for some folks to get healed. And, and uh, I jokingly now I said, maybe I was hoping for someone with a, you know, I said, anybody need healed? They wheeled her right up to me. Here you go. <laughs> it's so early in the morning. People are still wiping their eyes. They wheeled this lady right up to me. She'd been 16 years in that wheelchair. And I went to pray for her, and a little small voice said, tell her to stand. The Holy Ghost said, just tell her to stand. I go, all right, go ahead, stand up. I wasn't screaming and losing my voice. I said, go ahead, stand up. And she was a visitor. She hadn't learned the People are supposed to pray for you and nothing happened. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. She said, okay. And she stood up. And she walked. And she when they took her home, she walked up the ramp, uh, the wheelchair ramp. She walked up and praised God. After 16 years in the wheelchair, amen. You, you start to expect stuff to happen. Believe it to happen. Amen. Believe it. You can see it. Amen. And the great thing is, no, God's no respecter of persons. But he's a respecter of passion. Amen. Somebody told me today, Brother Moses, you just need to start preaching overseas. They'll, they'll receive your ministry. They're, they're, they're hungry overseas. I'm just hoping that God, somebody's hungry here. Amen. I'm hoping somebody has a passion right here in America. I don't think somebody has a desperation right here. I don't want to have to go to Africa or the Philippines to find somebody who cares, somebody who's uh, passionate about the things of God. I believe it can happen in Woodbridge, Virginia. I believe the hunger can be birthed in uh, uh, Tampa, Florida, Woodbridge, Virginia, wherever you're from, hallelujah. Richmond, wherever you're going. We can set this world on fire. And the on the Marine base. Hallelujah. Did somebody get healed the other day? Is that, did I understand that correctly? Yes, brother. Come on, somebody. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. This guy is, this guy is up. This guy is God. Thank God. Thank God. You've got the power. Amen. Isn't God good? Your tenacity, your hunger. How many's heard of Ruth from the Bible? Not a Jewish woman, Gentile woman. Said your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. God said I like her attitude. He gave her Boaz. They had Obed, who had Jesse, who had a son named David, became king of Israel. She was right. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. She, she was the great grandmother of King David. God put her in the lineage of the Messiah. In Revelation 22 and 16, it says, it says Jesus is, is the root and the offspring of David. Ruth, not a Jewish woman. That was foreshadowing the day and age when whosoever will, whosoever will, whosoever will. Can drink the water and life freely. But you gotta be thirsty. You gotta be hungry. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. Oh, I'm fine, thank you. You're not fine. Those who are not hungry, they're not, they're not fine. 
You're blessed if you're hungry. You're blessed if you're thirsty. You're blessed if you say, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. You shall be filled. When I didn't have the Holy Ghost, I said, Lord, I shall be filled. I did the hunger and thirst and thirst, they shall be filled. Ask and you shall receive. Lord, I'm claiming, I'm quoting. I began to quote the word of God. He's a rewarder than the diligently seeker. And one night in my apartment, 17 years old, I said, whatever you have to do to me, don't let it be lost for eternity. And I went to say, Jesus, and something took over my words. I began to speak in another tongue, speak in heaven language. There was like a fire happening. I mean, there was a, a dimension of peace. Felt like the load lifted off of me. Hallelujah. That fog, that burden, that oppression. Amen. Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Amen. So I'm going to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God's a respect for passion. I was this carnal idiot in the youth group who never got. That's what the devil told me. Because it took me six years to get the Holy Ghost. But when I got a hold of it, I said, I'm not letting go. And I prayed through every single day. I'd stay at the altar and pray for anybody who wanted to. If the last person there, we had a, we had a very large church, I'd stay the last person there. I'd go to the camp and pray with the, the eight-year-olds. I'd go to jail and pray folks. I'd go to the nursing home and preach. They didn't know what I was saying, but I preached anyway. One there was a lady, an apostolic lady in the nursing home. And at the end of one of my preach, at the end of one of my uh, messages, she came up to me and she goes, Don't worry, you'll get better. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One guy called me, hey, can you come over to my house and teach me a Bible study? He was about 18 or so. I go, oh, okay, I showed him his house. I walk in. He has a whole living room full of teenagers and young people that are ready to hear a Bible study. Oh, okay. I start teaching it. They're hanging on every word I'm saying. The guy who invited me was drinking beer and walking in and out and <laughs> being a distraction and coming in and out. The next Sunday, that guy came to church and got the Holy Ghost. You never know what God's going to do. Right. You never know what God's going to do. Just be crazy. Carry, you have my permission. Just be crazy. Just be radical. Just go. Okay. Just carry it anyway. Just go. Just talk to the Just talk to the Just talk to the And just witness. Put your hands to the Lord. And lift your hands to the Lord. Just be caught up on something. Just prophesy. Just decree a thing. Just speak faith. Speak life. Brother Joshua, God's going to use you, man. God's really going to use that young man. God's blessed that family. Thank God. It's been through so many things. God's strengthened them. Seek God behind them. Oshana. These children here. We've got Abigail. Amen. A little prophet. Just, amen. You start speaking, man. Speaking faith. Amen. There's more finances coming to you. Uh, I, I can't discern if this is. Uh, I see a lot of it's for the church. And a portion for you, yourself, and your family. Glory to God. And greater dimension of wisdom like Solomon had is coming upon you. This sister, God's touching you in your heart. Amen. I see the rhythm and timing of your heart is going to come into perfect, uh, perfect timing and rhythm. I didn't ask or worry if you knew about it, but the Lord told me to pray for your heart. Raise your hands to God, and He's touching your neck. Right in here. Hallelujah. Right in Attention that you get. Hallelujah. Right through here. Oh. And you're going to start hearing the voice of God better. Glory to God, because He's going to encourage you, amen, and give you, amen, peace. In the midst of the storm, He's going to give you more uh, faith and joy. Hallelujah. Also, don't be concerned about sore uh, places across the torso. Amen. Don't be concerned about any sore spots. You will not have cancer. In the name of Jesus, those headaches are leaving you. Thank God. Thank God. And I keep wanting to quit, but he's telling me he's touching your hips and back, too. Hips and back. And heartbeat, regular time. Just receive it in faith. Just receive it in faith. Oh, she get it in your center. Mom, God, strengthening you right now in the name of Jesus. Every trace, even the beginnings of arthritis, 
dissolve and leave. Hey, uh, she's a woman of faith, but it's rising up again in Jesus' name. I'm praying for Brother Bird right now for divine connections. God, he's hungry to be used, but the hungry shall be filled. Give him supernatural connections where he will be the most effective God and bless his, his home and finance and his, and his marriage, his ministry. Hallelujah. Unite them as one. Let her be used more powerfully than she ever imagined. Brother Zach, don't be weary of well doing it. You're gonna, by the way, you're going to get better rest at night, too. Better rest. I don't know if that means anything to you. And, and once in a while, I'm going to speak to your dreams. Hallelujah. Brother Zach, don't be weary of well doing it. Shata, stay uh, at the foot of the cross. Stay humble. God will promote you. God will use you. Bless this family. Uh, let there be no uh, discord. Bring harmony and peace to this home. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Amen. You're going to hear his voice, speak encouragement, speak revelation to you, and he's going to block out the other discouraging voices. Glory to God. Raise your hands and receive it. Uh, Sister Ray, I see you writing something. You're going to write. I don't know if you ever thought about it or not, but you're going to write something. Don't forget that. You're going to write. It's going to be to bring life to people. Hallelujah. It's going to bring wisdom and life to people. And you might think, no one would want to read. They do. They're going to want to read it. In Jesus' name. Lay hands on us. We're going to pray for it. Hallelujah. I pray for open doors for her in the name of Jesus. The preaching appointments and, and favor connections. Let them all pray in word of knowledge. Let them all pray in healings in the name of Jesus. She know that performed against you shall prosper. Say the Lord, for I the Lord will go before you. There will be demons cast out. And in your youth, you will do mighty things as David did. Hallelujah. There's anointing on you, buddy. There's a touch of the Lord on you. God's touching your glands and your system right now, and, and your things are going to be regulated. Praise God. Even there's a, there's a slight fluctuation of, of sugars and some just different in your schedule, some different imbalances. God's touching you right now. Raise your hand to the Lord. And in your throat, something that catches there. You feel God's healing something there. And you're also your thyroid a little bit. It needs to touch a little bit. Thank you, Lord. Someone say amen. amen. God knows all about you. When I prayed for word of knowledge, of course, I was thinking, oh, it's going to be something that that person just, they knew. And then when I say it, they're going to go, wow. But God will have you pray for stuff they might not have a clue about. You just follow the Holy Ghost. And I have had it where, like the lady in Danville, Illinois, and I saw I, I told her about her sugar, and she went, she said, I don't, I don't have any sugar, until the doctor, you know, a couple months later told her about it. So, just take whatever is spoken to you and claim your healing. I don't mean take the sickness, <laughs> take the healing. <laughs> Glory to God. God's touching your eyes. Your eyes, in the spirit and in the physical, you're going to have sharper vision. It's gotten a little bit weaker on you. Is that true? It's gotten a little weaker on you. It's going to strengthen it. God, strengthen his eyes, bring healing and, and, and strength to his eyes. And then also in the, in the spirit, let him see. And in, in, in both in, on, on a spiritual dimension and, and in the just practical. 
while you're his, healing his physical vision, it's coming stronger in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you, but I don't know what to pray for. I, I see God is touching your knee. Hallelujah. Your right knee. Thank you, Lord. God, touch your right knee in the name of Jesus. Also, a little bit of shortness of breath and wheezing it comes to you. God's healing that in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Move around, see if it feels any better or stronger. Amen, Jesus. Is there anything else you need before I pray for someone else? Shoulder, be healed right now. We're not wishing or hoping. We're commanding. Be healed now. Jesus' name. Also, my Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank God. This uh, brother in the blue, raise your hands to God. There's uh, just a hedge of protection. Glory to God. I see God keeping you from accidents and keeping you from incidents. Call on my shot. He's canceling plans of the enemy right now. And God's putting a hedge of protection. Go ahead and lay your hands on. He's putting a hedge of protection on uh, around you, the angels around you in the name of Jesus. Call us the enemy quarter on Jesus name. Also, more revelation from the scriptures. When you God's expanding your view on revelation from the scriptures. God's going to, as you study, He's going to shower your mind with light and rhema and word. And I see you mentoring and teaching other people. Glory to God down the road. Hallelujah. Lord, protect them from accidents and incidents. Glory to God. in Jesus' name. God, draw her into a deeper dimension with you and increase her faith, increase her boldness. Her, increase her boldness in you. God, draw her in. God, help, heal her of wounds and hurts from the past in the name of Jesus. Heal her of wounds and hurts from, the, from yesteryear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I like this brother here. How you doing, brother? What do you what would like God to do for you? Raise your hands. God's going to strengthen your heart. I see it beats. Sometimes it beats too hard. God's healing that. Thank God. She's nodding her head. Why are you nodding your head? It's true. Well, it must have been the Lord because I don't know anything about that. So in the name of Jesus, be healed in your heart. Let it be normal and strengthen and bless and gone. Strengthen his eyes too, Lord God. Let his vision not get weaker and weaker, but stronger and stronger. In Jesus' name. Help him hear your voice, God. Hear your voice. And, and you're going to just uh, keep singing praises to God and, and keeping that joy that you have, keeping that joy alive. Glory to God. And there's some young people you're going to connect to, amen, and you're going to, you're going to lay hands on them. They're going to, amen, be encouraged. They're going to be, oh, thank the Lord. They're going to be uh, edified, amen, lifted out of darkness. Oh, thank you, Lord, and come up to where you are in the spirit. God, I'm God use him right now. God, I pray you connect him and use him in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, she had also your eyes. I was also touching your eyes. A strain and blur, the pressures that come to your eyes. It's going to regulate. It's like a, uh, not glaucoma, but like a, something with the pressures. Be healed, be healed. Healed. Amen. So Revelation when you study the word. Thank you. Hedge of protection. Accidents cancel right now. So Clap your hands and praise the Lord. And I see there's weapons. There's a mighty sword in your hand and a shield. A sword and a shield. And your job is prayer. You're a prayer warrior. And you're going to cover your husband and this church and fight battles. Thank God. Who will help pray for Sister Woods, though? Who will help pray for her? In the name of Jesus. 
Kova Hashemai, woman of warfare, woman of war. She's a warrior in the spirit of God. But I also pray for refreshing and strength to be poured back into her in virtue as she has fought and labored and given out. Refresh her and strengthen her in Jesus' name. Brother Woods, if you lay hands on her. Shake it to Sapatika Hashemai. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But there's weapons. Kanana mo sanda de de ma powerful weapons, sharp weapons. So cool that the matia that the yoshika the high. Yeh kala ba se de yoshika the high. Let's clap our hands to Jesus.
get all the men to help us clean up real fast? Let's get out of here in Jesus' name. Be back here Sunday, break a friend. Amen. Let's have a good time in Jesus' name. Amen.